Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. This time we are talking about temperature measurement and a special form of temperature measurement. We are talking about resistive temperature measurement. What is behind this resistive temperature measurement? I'm going to show you. Okay, so we have some sensor. Again, we have some sensor. Here it is. Look at this tiny thing here. Look at this tiny thing. This is one example. Uh, one example of this uh, temperature measurement. I think what we can cover very good with this type of temperature measurement is that it is not a lot of mass. Uh, so this is one example. Yeah. Let's see what this thing is doing. Yeah, I will put it in here. Yeah, and I will measure. Since this is called resistive temperature measurement, I will measure the resistance of this thing. All right. So I have already prepared here my multimeter. Here there's the plus side, and here there's the minus side. Let's turn it to resistive measurement, and let's see. Okay, right now we have around 10 kilo ohms. Okay, so we have around 10 kilo ohms. Uh, and now I'm touching the sensor. See what this is doing? The resistance is changing. Because I bring in heat with my hands, uh, the resistance is dropping. This is a so-called uh, NTC, a negative temperature coefficient. What this means, we will hear. Yeah? And now, of course, you could say, hey, that's clear, he's making short, so short circuit with his hand. But if I let this loose, you see, the temp it's not going immediately up. It's now cooling off again. Yeah? And cooling down, of course, cooling off. Yeah? And we will reach, after a while, we will reach this, this 10 kilo ohms. And if I'm getting close with my hand, yeah, you see it's reacting because it's already getting hotter inside. I'm not touching anything. Yeah? I'm not touching anything. Yeah? And the resistance is already changing. So the only thing I need to measure is the resistance of, of a material, of a suitable material. There are a lot of suitable materials. However, I am going to explain to you what materials are very often used. This here is a semiconductor material. We will hear about the benefits and not benefits of this. Yeah, but yeah, you have seen how it's working. Yeah, that's the principle. Measure a resistance, then you get the temperature. The only thing you need to know at which temperature this thing has which resistance. How this is working, I'll show you on a sheet of paper. So as we have seen, a resistance thermometer is a, a resistor, basically, yeah, which is changing by the temperature. Yeah? So we have here a resistance depending on the actual temperature, theta. Yeah? And we have to measure this resistance. Of course, we, when we talked about the, the uh, static behavior of, of measurement systems, uh, we talked about that there are, there are lines, uh, characteristics, and we want to have a linear line. So this R from theta should be as linear as possible. Uh, this would be beneficial for us, right? So, we need to look for a material which is changing its resistance according to temperature very linear. Such material is not there. Uh, there is no, at least we don't know any material which is linear to temperature, which resistance is linear to temperature. Very close to this yeah, comes, comes platinum. Okay, usual. Material Platinum, PT. 
Okay? Because in Platinum, we can calculate this R from theta. Yeah, we can calculate this R from theta. And in Platinum is enough to use the following formula. There is an R0. The resistance this piece has, this piece of Platinum has, at 0 degrees Celsius. And then we change this. R multiplied by theta plus B multiplied by theta squared. Yeah. So we have a second order. And for platinum, yeah, for platinum, this A equals 3.9083 per degree Celsius and B equals minus 5.775. 10 raised by the power of minus 7 by degree Celsius squared. Okay? And with this formula, yeah, this here, resistance at 0 degree Celsius. Okay? With this formula, we are good enough for platinum yeah, to calculate over a wide range of temperatures. Yeah? This is Linearizing it good enough. Yeah. And there is platinum is unique there. Yeah. Former times also nickel was used, but however nickel you need, you know, uh, raised by the power of three, four, and five, and so on, and then you have a small window. It's by far not that linear like platinum. Yeah. So you need by far more of those of those factors, and this does not make it easier. Yeah. And also at areas below zero degrees Celsius, nickel had some issues. So nowadays, the usual material for measurement purposes is platinum. There is, for instance, a sensor which is called PT100. Means platinum. Yeah. With resistance of 100 ohms at 0 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's a PT100. A PT500 would be a platinum at with 500 ohms at 0 degrees Celsius. A PT1000, there are different types, yeah? and this number always tells how many ohms it has per 0 degrees Celsius. And, PT, and if it is written Ni100, it would be a nickel. Yeah? Then you cannot use this formula. Hmm? Yeah. So this is how this is working. Okay. How is this built? Yeah? We have some of the resistor hmm? with its connectors, and the connectors are usually very long. And we have usually a protective tube yeah, so that you can put insert the sensor wherever you like and here we have some head yeah, where we have terminals and here we these are screw terminals, and here we have the cable outlet. Yeah. So usually we have here some protective tube. So you can put this into liquid. This is the PT sensor. Yeah. You can put this into liquid or whatever. Yeah. Insert it here. Often there is some. You can screw this in or. Yeah, there are different forms, yeah, and here it's the cable outlet. And then you can go to wherever you like. Yeah, yeah this is the, the physical representation. These things they come with different accuracy classes. Okay, so there are also accuracy classes.
and there is the accuracy class of C, which means we have a difference of 0 0.6 degrees Celsius eh, plus 1% of the measured temperature. Okay, that's C. Then there is accuracy class B and it's getting better. Yeah? We have 0 to 3 degrees Celsius absolute yeah? plus half a percent of the measured temperature. Yeah? Then we have A. Yeah? There we have 0 to 15 degrees Celsius, also half. And here we are not half, but 2%, 0 to 2 percent of the measured temperature. Yeah? And because Afterwards, they could, yeah, they produced then class AA, uh, like on the energy labels, A is not good enough anymore, we're using AA, 0 to 1 degree Celsius, plus, and here we are pretty close to, because uh, this is the accuracy. Maximum allowed deviation, actually. These are the actual accuracy classes. And the thing we looked at before, yeah, this little tiny thing, this is platinum. This is platinum? No. Uh, this is not platinum. This is a semiconductor. So there are also semiconductor out there which do have more, even more change in 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 temperature than platinum. However, they are not they are not very linear. Yeah. So there are there are also semiconductor thermometers out there, and well. There are two different types. There are NTCs, negative, negative temperature coefficient. This is this here. This means the temperature. Here, if you look, these are positive values. Yeah, this is negative value, but it's very tiny. This is the main positive value. This means the resistance will rise at rising temperature. Yeah? This would be PTC, positive temperature coefficient. Yeah? Higher temperature, higher resistance, and a negative temperature coefficient. Then this A would be negative. Yeah, what is then at the squared and whatever terms does not really matter. This means higher temperature. Lower resistance. This we have seen. This behavior we have seen. I touched it. The resistance was dropping, so this was an NTC, negative temperature coefficient. If they are changing their resistance so good and so so huge, why not do them? Why not use them everywhere? Yeah, because those things are. Uh, not linear. Not linear means really not linear. Really, really straight. Curves. Yeah. Not linear at all. all. Right. At all. Because this is also not linear. But this is way different. Yeah. Not linear. Uh, NTCs, for instance, have uh, issues. With long term stability, and affected, affected by humidity. So the humidity is also affecting the, the resistance of these NTCs. Yeah? So why are they used? Plus side. Write it here minus, uh, zack, plus plus 
plus huge huge change in resistance per degree Celsius okay huge change yeah? and can be directly in semiconductors can be built directly in semiconductor chips the temperatures you read out of your main board or out of your processor and so on these are exactly those things yeah so they are used because they can be placed exactly where the temperature is reached and not inside some tube or something like this yeah however the accuracy is not that high yeah if you need the accuracy to be one two three degrees celsius or kelvin these things are good enough yeah? then usually there is some sort of lookup table to linearize them so it's just a table where it's written, it's not a formula, it's a table where it's written, okay, this resistance, this temperature, this resistance, this temperature, and so on. So you just have to look it up in the table, look up table, and you know the temperature. This is how this is usually done. Like I said, it's some sort of measuring, but not very accurate. Two, three degrees Celsius offset, no issue. Here, here, platinum, this is accurate, precise measurement. Yeah? So that's the difference. However, the principle is the same. Resistance thermometers. One possible possibility. One possible possibility. One possibility to measure temperature. It's enough. Yeah? One possibility to measure temperature, resistance, thermometers. Next time we are talking about another possibility. We are talking about thermo elements how these are working i will explain next video for this time thank you very much for listening goodbye